All right, some of y'all seen this before, okay? So as you know, arthroscopic surgery, when we do scopes, quote unquote, when we use a little camera to minimally invasively do surgery. So I'm holding a simulator of a scope right now. And what I do, what I like to do is work on some scope skills in between surgeries to kind of get my skills going. So I call that free throws. And so we're gonna do some free throws. I'm gonna get some of y'all's top questions. I got my man, Zach, in the background, hitting me up with questions. So let's see what you got. What are the most common sports injuries that you treat? So for me, the most common one um, relates to the hip. So I do a lot of hip arthroscopy or hip scopes. And so that's frequently, you know, fixing hip labral tears, um, fixing hip impingement. Uh, I'd say number two in terms of commonality for me is ACL surgery. So that's ACL reconstruction. And then after that, it's a lot of meniscus surgery. So people tear their meniscus sometimes playing sports. Sometimes people tear their meniscus just because of life. Uh, these things happen. How can athletes prevent injuries? So the biggest thing for that is functional strength. So I always let people know that strength is the number one thing to prevent you from getting injured. Um, so when you have a given joint, take it your hip, your knee, what have you, you have muscles surrounding it. And those muscles can act kind of a safeguard against injury if they're strong enough. And so having that right kind of strength around there can really help prevent that. Now that's a combination with things about you know, choices you make too. So getting adequate rest in between doing things and not pushing yourself to the limit every single time, recognizing when your body is fatigued and giving it a break when you need to are all important things. This one's a pretty, uh, pretty popular question. What is the difference between a sprain and a strain? That's a great question. So a sprain usually relates to more of a ligament injury or a tendon injury. So the tendons and ligaments are kind of cables that connect either muscle to bone or uh, connect bone to bone. And so when you have a sprain, for instance, you could have a sprain of like your ACL, or you could have a sprain of your LCL. And that's saying that you have a partial injury to that. And you could have a sprain of your ankle, and that's saying you have a partial injury to the ligaments that hold your ankle in place. Now a strain usually relates to the muscle itself. So you could have a strain in your muscle, like more of a strain in your biceps because you did too much or a strain in your pec muscle because you did too much bench pressing or something. And that's a whole different thing. But those terms get used back and forth interchangeably, but they are different. All right, so if I'm an athlete, when should I, uh, when should I seek metal, medical attention for an injury? Like when, when is the time for me to pull the trigger and go ahead and see the doc? Well, to start with, I would say, if you're worried, see see somebody. If you're worried, see somebody. I mean, sometimes you gotta just trust your gut and you, you know your body, so you know if something's not right. Um, so you check yourself and you you know go in and be seen. Now, the biggest, I say, red flags, for instance, on a given joint are difficulty with moving that joint. So if you say you can't move the joint and it's not, your knee is locked, as we say, and you can't move it, that's a reason. A whole bunch of swelling in your joint that won't go away, like in the shoulder or the knee, that's a reason. So these are things to consider when you're um, thinking about if I need to be seen or not. But I always tell people, listen to your body because you know your body better than everyone. And if you think things aren't right, then I think it's important that you um, be seen. When you're seeing a patient, when do you determine when an athlete can return to play after an injury? Are there certain things that you're looking for, certain benchmarks that they have to hit? Almost oh, certainly. So we have really you know, spent a lot of research and interest looking at return to sport and what makes someone safe to return to sport. And that's something that's still evolving, but it's a combination of a lot of things. So the muscle, muscular strength like we talked about, I think is important. Um, so we do strength testing for someone who's trying to go back to sport. In a lot of situations, we're trying to see that you have enough strength to protect you, right? And we can use the other side, the uninjured side, as kind of a, um, a benchmark for you. So we might say we want you to be within 95% of the other side, or maybe even 100% before we let you get back to playing. So that's one consideration. Another consideration uh, is, of course, mental health. So mental health, as we've learned, is a large contributor to whether someone's going to successfully return to a sport. And so mental health can be something we have to think about. You may recall in another video, I've talked about something called kinesiophobia. Now that's kind of a mental block that some people will get where their bodies are so afraid of getting hurt again that it won't help you or won't allow you to move normally. And that can actually predispose you to get injured again because 
you know, your body's not moving normally, so you're not able to react like you need to when you're playing a sport, it can be quite dangerous. So that's something we really have to think about too. So mental health plays a big role in that. So it's really a combination of things and depends on each person and what sport they play. How do you go about um, approaching the treatment of overuse injuries? So the number one thing is rest. And that sounds simple to some people, but the difficulty there is people don't want to do it, <laughs> especially athletes. A lot of times people want to just keep pushing and pushing and um, it's understandable but we also have to kind of fight this culture of more is more and understand that sometimes, listen, less is more. And sometimes it makes more sense for your overall progression for you to rest rather than push through pain or push through issues. So getting to someone to rest is a big thing. Now, a lot of like your common considerations coming with overuse injuries, things like in some cases you need to be braced or stabilized, that can be rare. In some cases you need physical therapy to kind of help you work the other muscles to make them strong enough so that they can deal with the issue rather than letting the injured muscle keep doing it. So rest doesn't always mean just sitting on your couch, which I think a lot of people get afraid of. It can be an active recovery situation where we're kind of working with therapists or athletic trainers to get you strong and moving again. What are some advancements in sports medicine that have significantly improved treatment outcomes? So I think there's a few. I'm gonna talk about one important one related to the rehabilitation so we have improved considerably in terms of how we rehab people after sports injuries. And one of the big things related to that, one important thing that I like to talk about is blood flow restriction. Now that's a technique with physical therapy where we almost cut off some of the blood temporarily to where you're working with kind of a, like a blood pressure cuff. And then we have you work out the muscle. And so what that does is it forces that muscle to work harder than it normally would. And the benefit there is you can actually get more protective strength by doing less weight. So you can protect yourself not having to do too much weight and hurt yourself, but you can still see the important gains. If we're talking about surgery itself, I mean, one of the big things we are understanding better is orthobiologics. Now, orthobiologics is something that some people will call like stem cells. Ooh. Now, stem cells is a bad term because it makes it seem like you can grow things back, which is not true. Um, uh, orthobiologics where we take things like, for instance, PRP or platelet-rich plasma, which is taking some of the patient's blood and kind of spinning it down and taking out some of the healing components. And those healing components can then help you um, kind of restore, either stop inflammation. I don't want to give the impression it grows things back that are torn, but it can help with inflammation and pain and really help with recovery in some cases. Seems like every week there's a new diet fad or some trendy, um, you know, some trendy thing on the internet that you know, people are doing. But uh, from from your standpoint, how important is nutrition uh, when it comes to sports medicine? Uh, nutrition is key. I mean, I don't think anybody recovers from anything if they're not getting the right kind of nutrition. Um, and so, I, you know, not being a nutritionist myself, what I can say is that there's a lot of fads and trendy things out there that we have to be careful of. So if you're selecting things, you need to be looking and making sure that's backed up by data, by real research, not just what somebody thinks, because a lot of people have opinions, but don't necessarily have it backed up by anything. But I think some of the bases to consider, I mean, of course, a well-balanced diet that includes a combination of the carbs you need for energy, the protein you need for muscle healing, you know, the minerals and vitamins you get from vegetables. I think all that's important to keep in mind. What are some key considerations for young athletes in preventing injuries and maybe how that differs for say, you know, someone that's a little bit older? Now you've heard me go off on this before. Yeah, let me fix my joint here. You've heard me go off on this before. I mean, the year round sports, year round single sports for young athletes. That's the number one thing that's gotta go. That can't be, it can't be. We're seeing way too many overuse and like serious injuries from these kids who are playing the same sport year round at way too young of an age. So that's number one. Adequate rest, adequate you know recovery for these kids. And listen, you know I know it's out there. Where it feels like you know if we do, if we put you you know to work at a young age, we do it all the time. You're going to become excellent at it. And you're going to go far. And that's not necessarily true. Studies don't even really support that. You know, so a lot of times the people who are playing multiple sports or even just not always playing sports, sometimes just doing free play, these kids are developing skills that then translate into you know better. You know, adaptability later on in life. Now, I mean, the day is going to come when you're going to have to specialize. It's true, but you shouldn't be doing that like pre, you know, pre pre teens. You shouldn't be doing that. Like, I see six year olds doing year round sports sometimes, and it's just 
unbelievable to me. So I think the biggest thing for young athletes is that they cannot be, you know, early specialization of sport. You have to be mixing it up. You have to be giving adequate rest and allowing time for free play and just being children is important. So we've established that there's a labrum in the hip. Uh, I know that there's a labrum in the shoulder as well. Do they serve the same function just at different parts in the body? Or are there some subtle differences that, you know, the average man might not know? Yeah, so very similar structures in both the hip and the labrum. Very astute of you to notice that. And so they serve a, they serve a very similar purpose. So the similar things are special types of cartilage that help with stability. I would describe them slightly different from each other, whereas in the hip, the labrum is kind of more like a suction seal holding the ball and socket in place. I would say that on the um, on the shoulder, it's more like a bumper um, holding to hold things in place. Now that's an important differentiation because those two joints are pretty different. The hip is very, very solid and um, so, uh, stable, I should say. So it's kind of congruent as in it holds itself together. Whereas a shoulder is a little more free flowing and you can see that on yourself, you have more mobility in your shoulder probably than you do in your hip if you're moving around it. Um, and so in that sense, the labrum is serving a slightly different purpose. Whereas in the hip is more of a suction seal and the shoulder is a bumper. But in both cases, that labrum is serving as a stability check. Dr. O, as far as you can remember, did you always want to be a doctor? Was that kind of always your goal or is that something you found a little bit later in life? Uh, I think probably in college it really came to me. I think the biggest thing with me is being able to serve um, communities through sports medicine, which is uh, sports, as y'all know, is an important part of communities. And so treating athletes who are injured and all kinds of athletes at every level, I think is an important thing to me. So that's what really brought me into the field.